Hi, I'm Mike Stokes with Lush Planet Design Build, and today I'm going to be talking about how to build a um, foundation, a post and pier foundation and subfloor for a deck or a tiny home. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to is basically your two most important tools. One is your plumb bop, and then the second would be any type of laser level, uh, a pointing laser level. Uh, so when we first laid out this um, subfloor and beams and posts and piers, we had batten boards and we laid out strings at each the perimeter of the whole building. So the first thing I'd like to show you is how we got it square. So we got our measurements, uh, the width that we wanted, and we actually measured the lines so that they set down the middle of the posts. So we took our total distance, our total width and our total length and subtracted it by an inch and a quarter and that put us down the middle of the post, an inch and a quarter on each side. So if you come in closer, I'm going to just show you our 345 system which everybody who's building anything square needs to know. First thing that we always do is we set a mark at four feet And then, so he's got a little tick there at four feet. And then a little tick here at three feet. And then I'm just gonna take my tape and run it and make sure you do it on the same side, uh, right at that tick to this tick. And then since it's square, that's gonna land right on four, five feet, okay? So to get a more accurate read, what we did was multiply that. You can multiply it by two or three. We multiplied it by three, so instead of going four feet out, we went eight, 12 feet out, and then nine feet out, and then you have the um, 15 foot length in between. So when you set your plumb lines, you do your, your three, four, five, get that first corner set, and then measure your width along your length lines and make sure that they're the same, uh, and then do your cross measurements to make sure that you've got the same number at the 45s. But starting with the 345 is going to make your 45s work a lot better. So the second thing I want to show you is our posts. So let's go down to this post right here, our post base. These, we had a bit of um, uh, clay soil, so we went down three feet and uh, the critical thing that I think most people make the mistake of is they don't go all the way down the hole with the plumb bob. So off of your string line here, you drop the plumb bob all the way down the hole and then adjust your hole. And then you'll get a much more accurate post base. So you can see even on this one, even with doing that, we were still a little bit off on this one. Um, but as long as you're mostly in the center within a couple inches, you still get the structural integrity of the post base. Now the next most important tool that you're going to have is your laser level. So when we run the laser level, you always want to pick one point of the building. So picking the, since we're on a slope here, we started with the lowest level here. And then run the laser level here, turn it on and it'll show it's two inches above the laser level. You're going to run it along your beam or your joist. And then the easy way, it's their super wonderful tool. If you look right here, it's set just at two inches. So then you go down to the edge, the other end over there, and that should be two inches as well. I'm going to go over here. I'm not going to go all the way to the end, but you get the point. It's two inches. So, and then you're going to run and just do it across to the next point over there and then across to this point over here and pick a few points in the middle too. The other thing I'd like to bring your attention to is the ends. All of our ends that are exposed to weather, what we do is we put a, a wood treatment and then an emulsified Henry's tar. So you know Henry's roofing tar, this is the emulsified which is a little easier to paint on and that'll last um, indefinitely as long as it doesn't crack. It's not, it's not exposed too much to sun, which this will not be. Um, that'll long, last a super long time. 
so let's walk around to this side and we'll look at the beams that we created here. So this, this, this tiny home is a little bit overbuilt. We chose to use 2 by 12 beams and then a 2 by 8 uh, joist on top of that. So this is incredibly structurally sound. It's, it's never going to bow or bend. Um, you could go, you could probably go less. You could probably do like a 2 by 10 or, and then these could be 2 by 6s for the span that we, we did on this building. It's a 15, it's actually 16 feet wide by 27 feet long. I think the next thing that I'd like to show you is the insulation that we chose to use for this particular job. Since we have an exposed underside where they're not going to be enclosed from any rodents or raccoons or other um, creatures, we chose to use very tightly cut foam rigid foam pieces as our insulation. This will give us an R value of, it's three inches thick, it'll give us an R value of R19. So it's plenty of insulation. If you use a bat insulation, then the rats get in there, they tear it up, um, and they, the bat insulation just doesn't hang that well when you're trying to stick it in a floor. It tends to hang and sag and there's all kinds of gaps. So in order to have a really highly functioning insulation barrier, the way I was taught, it's a really great way to think about it, is you want to have the cavity filled side to side, both directions, and top to bottom with zero gaps. Because everywhere there's an air gap, then you lose all of your R value and you go to R zero in that gap and the airflow um, moves in there. So I think that's it. Um, I would just emphasize again, use your 345, multiply it by two, three, four, five, whatever you need to and start on that first corner. Always work from one corner, square and level, and then work your way out with your plumb bop and your laser level. And everyone should know this in construction, but double, do it and then check it again. Do it and check it again, and then always refine and keep getting your things closer. I like, some people would say um, you could go an eighth out, but I, would, I like when it comes to foundation work to stay within a sixteenth. And then everything you build on top of that is really nice and tight. So thanks for watching. Hope you got value out of this video. Please subscribe to the channel or visit our website at lushplanet.net.